Okay, so let's talk about the VC dimension. Um, we're going to start with the growth function theorem. And you may have noticed that like this bound is just so not easy to compute. Like computing that growth function, I'm not even sure where to start if you want to compute that directly. Luckily, VC dimension makes sure that you don't have to. All right, so I want to go back to the half spaces for just a minute because I want to make the point that the growth function is often less than two to the n. All right, if you have n points, the total number of ways you can possibly classify them is at most two to the n. Uh, because, you know, why is that? Because two to the n is like, it's like the total, um, it's like the total number of ways you can divide the data up into two groups. So it's like every possible set of class labels you can put on them, you have to be able to find a, a classifier that perfectly can classify them. Okay, so, all right, two to the n means you can label the data any way you want and I can find a classifier that classifies it perfectly that way. So two to the n is the maximum for any function class. Okay, so for all function classes, in fact, put together. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and put up the case where the growth function is actually two to the n, um, which is with two points here in, in, in with uh, half spaces in two dimensions. So for every possible labeling, we wanna give these points, we can find a classifier for it. And this is called shattering. Okay, so if the growth function is two to the n, there is a data set of n points where f can perfectly classify them no matter what the labels are. And this is, this we say f shatters that set. Okay, so that's shattering. So when I talk about the set of lines in the plane, that can shatter two data points in two dimensions. And that same set, lines in the plane, that can shatter three data points in two dimensions. However, lines in the plane does not shatter four points in two dimensions because there is no configuration of the data for which I can actually classify using all possible labelings. Okay, two to the fourth possible labelings, no, can't do it because of the problem with the diagonals that I showed you earlier. Okay, so the VC dimension of the set of functions F is the largest number of points that it can shatter. Okay, so officially, the VC dimension of F is the largest number of points n such that the growth function equals two to the n. So if I ask you, okay, what's the VC dimension of half spaces in two dimensions? You know the answer, because we did this one. The answer is three, right? We can shatter three points, but we cannot shatter four points. Okay, so then I could say to you, well, can you guess what the VC dimension is of half spaces in P dimensions? So, you know, if we were actually in in p dimensions and we could use classifiers that were half spaces like hyperplanes and you could say well I'll just follow the pattern and I'll say p plus one and if you guess that you would be correct all right now uh, there's a lot of there's something that people often get messed up when they think about vc dimension um, so the vc dimension is the largest number of points such that there exists some configuration of them that could be shattered not every configuration needs to be able to be shattered, just one of them. Okay, so if you put the points in a line, like if you make them collinear, you can't, um, you know, you, you can't shatter them in two dimensions if there's like three or more of them, but that doesn't say anything about VC dimension. Okay, if you put the data points on top of each other, you definitely can't shatter them, but that doesn't say anything about VC dimension either. If you put them in a configuration where you can shatter them, that says something about VC dimension. Okay, so here again, I've, I've placed in the first, on the left, um, I, I placed the data so that you can't shatter them. Um, and then I, over on the right, I placed them so that you can shatter them. And the only meaningful one is the, the one where you can shatter them. Okay, so in order to prove that the VC dimension of F is a certain number H, you would have to prove two things. First, you have to show that there exists a configuration of H points that can be shattered, and you have to show that there's no configuration of H plus one points that can be shattered. Okay, and then at that point, you know the VC dimension is H, and you've, you've sort of pinned it down there. Okay, so last question. It seems like the VC dimension might be related to the number of parameters, right? The VC dimension is supposed to measure the complexity of a class of functions. Does it just measure, measure the number of parameters? Because, you know, you have more parameters, you have more flexibility, 
Maybe the VC dimension is always this number of parameters, certainly is for hyperplanes, right? Lines in a plane, they have three parameters, um, the X coefficient, the Y coefficient, and the intercept, right? Um, and half space is the number of parameters is P plus one. So you could think that for polynomials, the VC dimension is related to the degree of polynomial, and that's completely reasonable, it's totally true. Uh, or for decision trees, you might think that the VC dimension is related to the number of leaves in the tree, and that would be correct. But actually, the answer to this question is kind of a surprise. The VC dimension is not always related to the number of parameters that, that govern the function space. And I'll show you an example in the next video where this strange thing actually happens. It's in fact a one parameter family of functions with infinite VC dimension.